The Bug Out event is going from April 12th at 10 a.m. to April 17th at 8 p.m. It's going to be one of our best chances to get shiny Vespa Queen in Pokemon Go, which is a pretty rare shiny. I'll go over that, plus the event details, rare shinies to hunt, meta relevancy, and some tips in this video. So let's get right into it, starting with the bonuses, where we will get two times XP for successfully catching Pokemon with nice throws or better, increase candy for nice throws or better, increase candy XL for nice throws or better for trainers level 31 and up, and an increased chance to increase counter shiny combi and shiny burmy. Now that shiny boost on combi is what makes this such a good event to hunt that shiny vespa queen because combis themselves are generally a rare spawn although they will be a common spawn in this event and then only one in eight combis are female and only the females can evolve into vespa queen so definitely if that's a shiny you need get out and hunt it during this event. It'll also be the best time to finish up the shiny burmy line so if you're missing any of those the burmies also have that shiny boost so get out there and hunt them as well. Okay, moving on to the wild spawns, we will see Caterpie, Weedle, Shuckle, Wurmple, Cricketot, Combi, Sawaddle, and Dwebble, and rare spawns for Ninkata and Cutiefly, and everything there except for Seawaddle can be shiny. Now moving on to the research, we will have some bug encounters in there as well, so we will see Paris, Venonat, Plant Cloak Burmy, Sandy Cloak Burmy, Trash Cloak Burmy, Carablast, Shelmet, Dupiter, and Wimpod, all of which can be shiny as well. And then we will also have field research tasks, which will get you Mega Energy for Mega Pinsir, Mega Beedrill, and Mega Caesar. Now for the raids, and before we list the raid bosses, let me tell you about a new feature that they are bringing in for this event, as well as for the Mega Heracross Raid Day event, and that is once two or more trainers defeat an in-person raid, more spawns will happen around that gym for 15 minutes. Keep in mind that it does say there has to be two people, and they both have to be in person, so that means you can't trigger this by soloing a raid, and you can't trigger it by you doing it and inviting one remote person. There has to be at least two of you who are in person, and then I assume the other can remote in, but at least two of you have to be in person to trigger this. Okay, now let's talk about the raid bosses, and they are mostly bug themed as well. So in the one star raids, we are going to have Pineco, Shuckle, Ninkata, and Scorpy. And then in the three star raids, we will have Beedrill, Pinsir, and Cleavor. So everything in those raids, one star and three star, can be shiny. And raiding is the only way to get Cleavor in Pokemon Go. So if you still need that shiny, make sure you hit up a few of those during this event. And then in the five star raids, we will have Tapu Bulu, and just like the Tapus before it, it will We'll also know Nature's Madness. And then for the Mega Raids, we will have Mega Charizard X until April 13th at 10 a.m. But then on April 13th will be Mega Heracross Raid Day. So Mega Heracross making its Pokemon Go debut on that day. I'll have a video on that event coming soon and we'll go over its meta relevancy in a second. But let's quickly finish up the event details as there will be showcases and collection challenges for this event as well. The collection challenge will reward encounters and Mega Energy for bug types as well. Then the last bit of news before we get to meta relevancy there will be some new avatar items added to the store as well. So a combi backpack, as well as three sets of Burmy earrings, if any of those interest you. Okay, now let's go over the meta relevancy of what will be available from this event, starting with a few shout outs. First, we have Beedrill, which evolves from Weedle. Now Beedrill has a mega in the game, which is the best poison type raid attacker. So you might want to hunt a good IV one if you don't have it, and then hunt the mega energy in the field research if you need it. Then there's Pinsir from the three star raids, which also has a mega in the game, which is a decent and bug type attacker, but honestly, Mega Scissor and Mega Heracross both rank higher. However, you might still want a good IV one for the Mega. If there is ever an event that features bug and flying types, it would be the best Mega for candy, so it's always good to have a high Mega level Pokemon for each Mega that is available in the game. There's also Galissapod, which evolves from Wimpod and is ranked number 64 in the Master League, and just over 100 in the Ultra League. And then we also have S Cavalier, which evolves from Carablast and ranks 112 in the Ultra League. Okay, that's it for the shoutouts. Let's move on to the bigger and rarer stuff for this event, starting with Tapu Bulu. It ranks number 83 in the Master League, and I did run some simulation on it with Nature's Madness on PV Poke instead of Dazzling Gleam, and that move change doesn't really change its win-loss ratio, which isn't a huge surprise because it's still a fairy move. However, Nature's Madness will likely be an improvement over Dazzling Gleam, as it's generally a superior fairy type move. So if you want to run Bulu in the Master League, go after it now while it has the move. All right, let's move on to the meta relevancy for the new Mega being introduced during this event. Mega Heracross is a bug fighting dual type and has the base stats of 334 for attack, 223 for defense, 190 for stamina, and a max CP of 5,443. Now Mega Heracross will be one of the top, if not the top, fighting type raid attacker with counter and close combat. Kind of depends on whether you go by DPS or TDO. DPS means damage per second or how much damage a Pokemon deals per second, while TDO means the total damage 
output or how much damage it will actually do before it faints, if you weren't aware of those terms. But either way, it's top one or top two in terms of fighting type raid attackers. And it is also the top bug type raid attacker. Rip to one of Mega Caesar's only uses in the game. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. So getting one or even two of them with good IVs would be a good idea during this raid day event. One to have the fighting moveset and one to have the bug moveset, then you can mega whichever one you want, depending on which raid boss you're going up against. And of course it will have that boosted shiny rate of one in 10. So definitely a good idea to do as many mega Heracross raids as you can. Now in terms of PVP Heracross, because you can't use mega Heracross, across in most PvP situations. Ranks 131 in the Master League, so a spicier pick there. Its main use is as a raid attacker. All right, that's it for meta relevancy. Now let's talk a few tips. I already mentioned the Combi and Burmi boosted shiny rates for this event. However, Nankata will be in the wild and in the one star raids, and it also has a boosted shiny rate, perma boosted, of one in 64. So if you don't have a shiny one for that family, definitely hunt those in the wild or in the one star raids. Another good one to hunt during this event is Paris in the field research. Try and find as many of those as you can. Enter the encounter, but do not catch the Paris. Just exit the encounter once you enter it, and then it will stack that encounter in this spot above your regular field research encounters here. So that's a holding spot there. You can stack up to 100 encounters in there. Then you hold on to those encounters until a boosted Stardust event, then put on a star piece and catch all of those Paris. Now this is a great way to get a lot of Stardust because Paris is already a boosted Stardust catch, so it gets you 500 Stardust per catch instead of the regular 100, but with a two times or three times Stardust event that is boosted then to either 1000 Stardust or 1500 Stardust. And then if you put a star piece on, that will boost it again by 1.5 times. So you will either get 1500 Stardust or 2250 Stardust per Paris catch. And if you weren't aware, Stardust is one of the most important resources in Pokemon Go. You need it to level up your Pokemon, trade your Pokemon, and give them second charged attacks. So Stardust is definitely something you want to have a lot of on hand. And on that note, Combi is also a boosted Stardust catch, and it will be a common spawn during this event. Each one will get you 750 dust, or if you put on a star piece, it'll get you 1,125 Stardust per catch. But either way, star piece or not, catch every Combi that you see to get as much dust as possible. All right, moving on to some XP tips. This will also be a good event to grind some XP, because nice throws or better will get you two times XP for each catch. So get your excellent throws on point, and then throw on some lucky eggs and go out and grind because getting an excellent throw during this event will get you 2000 XP and if you do it with a lucky egg on it will get you 4000 XP per catch and if you are a real hardcore grinder of XP you could also save all your shell mitts and all your carablasts and then trade them with a friend who has done the same thing and once you trade those Pokemon they cost no candies to evolve so if you save those traded ones until there is an event where you get two times XP for evolutions then you can evolve them all however that does take up a lot of time and a lot of bag space so that is really only for those hard hardcore XP grinders. Okay, now let's move on to the best mega and candy tips because during this event, nice or better throws will also get you more candy or if you're level 31 or above, more candy XL as well. So if you're going out to grind during this event, definitely mega evolve your best bug mega. So that would be either mega Beedrill, mega Pinsir or mega Caesar. So a bug mega combined with the nice or better throws getting you extra candy and candy XL, you can definitely get a lot of candy for whichever Pokemon you are hunting during this event. And if there are some Pokemon that you want a lot of candy for, then you want to use a pineapple berry for two times candy or a silver pineapple berry for 2.33 times the candy. All right, next, let's go over some top counters. Now for Mega Heracross, I'll go over top counters for that one in the video I put out for that event specifically, but let's talk about Tapu Bulu. It is not super meta relevant. However, it can be shiny and it will have that move and it likely won't have the move when it comes out the next time. So now is definitely time to hunt it if you are interested in the shiny or ever running it in the Master League. Now as a grass fairy dual type, Tapu Tapu Bulu takes 256% damage from poison and 160% damage from fire, flying, ice, and steel, meaning some of the top counters are Mega Beedrill, Mega or regular Rayquaza, Mega Gengar, Shadow Toxicroak, Nihiligo, Shadow Gengar, Mega Charizard Y, and Roserade. Now because of that 256% damage from poison, definitely fill up the roster with your top poison type attackers, and then fill out the rest with fire, flying, ice, and steel. And again,
again because of that dual weakness to poison. If you have some top tier poison type attackers leveled up pretty high, you could potentially solo Bulu. If not, then two to three trainers with decent poison type attackers should also be able to take it down pretty quickly. All right, there's gonna be showcases for this event, so I'll give you my showcase tip as well, and that is just to go to less busy showcases. So go to showcases that aren't near popular grind spots, they aren't near major attractions in your city, and they aren't near any major transit hubs. These showcases will generally have less trainers that enter them, which means they are less competitive, which means you have a better chance at placing higher in the rankings. And of course, if you live in a city, one of the more extreme versions of this is to take a car ride to a showcase that's just outside the city, and again, that will have less trainers in it, give you a better chance of winning. Now, if you aren't aware, the medal that is associated with winning showcases has recently had two rewards added to it. So when you get the gold medal, you do get a pose that is your avatar reading a book. And then when you get the platinum medal for it, you get an encounter with PhD Pikachu. So if you're interested in either of those, you might want to try winning some showcases. And moving on to medals other than the showcase medal, this will be a bug event. So you can, of course, work on that bug type medal. And then you can also work on the rising star medal, which requires you to defeat 150 different species of Pokemon in raids. So if you haven't raided any of the Pokemon that are out in raids during this event, try and hit them at least once to add to that medal. All right, all the usual buttons are down below. If you found this video enjoyable or useful in any way, feel free to support the channel by hitting one of those buttons, whichever one you would prefer. If you want more Pokemon Go content right now, check out one of my videos on screen. Happy hunting. I hope you have unbelievably good shiny luck during the bug out event, and we'll see you in the next one, friends. Something incredibly funky.